associated to every matrix, there are two canonical subspaces, the null space and the column space. And in this video, I want to figure out what is the dimension of the null space and what is the dimension of the column space. Now, we know that dimension is just the number of basis vectors. And in fact, in previous videos, we've actually seen how to figure out a basis for the null space and a basis for the column space. So you just figure out those bases and that's going to be the dimension. So in this video, I'm going to quickly go through that process and in the next video, we're going to see something kind of crazy, which is how the dimension of the null space and how the dimension of the column space actually relate to each other and are interconnected. So first off, dimension of the null space. I'll remind you that the null space is all of the vectors that are killed off by applying the particular matrix A. They're all the vectors where AX is equal to zero. And my steps to find a basis for this are, number one, I want to go and reduce the matrix. So if it's AX equal to zero, I want to see maybe like some example like this where I've got my augmented matrix with the zero column. I've gone and put it actually into RREF form for you. Then what I was going to do is I say that there's these two free columns that are going to give me variables for that. I read off of the rows. They're going to tell me uh, what the rows are going to do. And I can put it then into vector format. Now, if you're not really speedy with this, pause the video and, and do it yourself carefully. But the point I want to make is this. When I go through the standard process of, of Gaussian elimination and back substitution to put the vectors in vector form, what I get out of it is a basis for the null space. These two vectors over here, they're linearly independent. And indeed, they're by definition going to be spanning all the vectors since every vector can be written in this way. So that's the basis. So in this case, I've got a basis. It's got two different vectors in it. And since the dimension is going to simply be the number of basis vectors, the dimension of null space is going to be two here. So my steps are number one, to reduce the matrix as we just saw. Number two, to note that the number of free variables is the same thing as the number of basis vectors. And then we can say that the dimension of the null space is just going to be whatever the number of free variables is going to be. So that's dimension of the null space. What about dimension of the column space now? Well, what's the column space? Remember, it is the span of the columns of the matrix A. And indeed, because a basis has to both span and be linearly independent, the only thing to check in the column space is the linear independent part because it gets a span part for free. So if I take my matrix like here's the same A, I want to reduce it in the exact same way. Because here's the trick. If I look at the first and second column here, well, there are multiples of each other. The second column is just twice the first column. So this, if I look at all four vectors, they're not linearly independent. However, if I focus just on the vectors with leading ones, that still spans it, and that are going to be linearly independent. So the columns with leading ones are going to be my basis for the column space, and therefore the dimension of the column space is just going to be the number of leading ones. Now, in the next video, what we're going to see is We've got the dimension of the column space, we've got the dimension of the null space, but in fact, they are intimately related.